You know, America is well known for its multi-layer cakes. In fact, in the early 20th century, how you made a cake was really an indication of what kind of cook you were. But around the world, there's lots of one-layer cakes. They're pound cakes, they're tea cakes, and they're torts. And that's what we're gonna cook today. We're gonna start with a chocolate almond tort from Capri. Move on to a Spanish almond cake. It's really a dump and stir. It's a great recipe from Spain, of course. And finally, we're gonna end up with a coconut tea cake from the Tandem Bakery in Portland, Maine. So stay tuned as we explore one layer of cakes we love. Funding for this series was provided by the following. Ferguson's proud to support Milk Street and culinary crusaders everywhere. For more information on our extensive collection of kitchen products, we're on the web at fergusonshowrooms.com. For 25 years, Consumer Cellular's goal has been to provide wireless service that helps people communicate and connect. We offer a variety of no-contract plans, and our U.S.-based customer service team can help find one that fits you. To learn more, visit consumercellular.tv. Since 1899, my family has shared our passion for everything that goes into our multi 100% Italian tomatoes. Only tomatoes, only multi. Designed by cooks for cooks for over 100 years. Cookware collection by Regalware, handcrafted in Wisconsin. The AccuSharp knife and tool sharpener, designed to safely sharpen knives in seconds. AccuSharp, keep your edge. So Torta Caprese obviously comes from Capri. It's been around a long time. It's a flourless chocolate almond cake. Almonds have been in Italy for thousands of years. The Romans used to throw them at weddings instead of rice. Ouch. Well, you could actually eat them. <laughs> uh, and of course, chocolate's a more recent thing. It's about 17th century. But they finally got the almonds and the chocolate together. So we love the cake very much. There's lots of different ways of doing it. Uh, and we're going to do a pretty simple version of it, right? Very simple version. The one you're talking about is a very streamlined recipe already, but here at Milk Street, we took it even further. We came up with an incredibly quick batter that's made completely in the food processor, goes straight to the baking pan, which saves a lot of time and cleanup. So you don't have to beat the egg whites and fold them in and all no, the other stuff. No, no, okay. no. We even did more streamlining, which we'll talk about as we go along. So one of the most important ingredients, obviously, is the almonds. And we found that if we toast the almonds first, it increases the nuttiness, and it actually brings out some of those roasted notes in the chocolate. We have two and a third cup of almond here, so we're going to toast these eight to 10 minutes in a 350 degree oven. The almonds are toasted from the oven, and we like to use the oven, especially for this volume of almonds, because it gets it very evenly toasted, and it's easy to do a large... I mean, as opposed to a skillet or something. As opposed to right. a skillet, yes. Okay. So we had two and a third cups. We're going to reserve a third cup, which will go on top of the tart before it bakes. The remaining two cups will go right into the food processor. And I get to eat any pieces <laughs> that fall on the counter. Yeah. So we want to process these until they're very, very fine. It takes about 20 to 30 seconds. I think we're good. That's pretty fine. You can smell it, mm. the toastiness. And while these are sitting for a couple minutes, we're going to add the vanilla to the eggs. And we have two teaspoons of vanilla. We're just going to combine those liquids together. And then the next important ingredient is the chocolate. We you mean what's left of the chocolate? What's left? <laughs> I had a few pieces. Uh, we streamlined the recipe to the most essential ingredients. And we found that the fat from the almonds meant we could eliminate the butter from the recipe. Mm. And we also decided not to melt the chocolate huh. in a double boiler, but to add it to the processor and grind it down with the That's almonds. cool. Yeah, it yeah. is, right? So we're going to pulse the chocolate in. It takes about 10 to 15 pulses. <laughs> this sounds like my old tractor trying to start <laughs> on a cold morning. <laughs> and that looks great. The chocolate is as finely ground as the almonds. The chocolate we prefer for this torte is the 70 to 80% cocoa solids. It's a bittersweet chocolate with a lot of depth of flavor. You could use a sweeter chocolate if that's what you have. It's just not going to be as intense. 
We're mm. using dark brown sugar as well for this. This is one packed cup. The molasses notes goes really well with the chocolate and the whole thing just sort of, they give each other a boost in a way. And one teaspoon of salt because every good baked good needs a little bit of salt. I would point out that normally we don't use more than 65 to 70 percent bittersweet oh. cacao, but you have so much sugar, the cup of sugar, that'll balance that out. Exactly. Yep. So this needs about 30 seconds to get fully blended. Okay. We're going to scrape down the sides for a minute. Oh, this is beautiful. This is very unusual. And I like it because it's easy, but there's no double boiler. You don't have to melt the chocolate. When the chocolate is ground this fine, it melts beautifully into the tort, and it just mm. gives a little bit of a chewiness. So we're going to turn this back on and add the eggs with the processor running. It takes about 15 to 20 seconds. There it is. Ooh. Done. Man, I like this. So our pan has been lightly spritzed with oil, piece of parchment in the very bottom and a little bit of oil again, no flour needed, which brings me to mind that this is a flourless tort. So there's no gluten mm. in it because there's no flour in it. And because we took the butter out, it's also... Dairy free. Well, except for eggs. It depends how you well, define you... eggs as dairy. But... Exactly. There's no milk yeah. dairy. It's also work free because <laughs> right. it's so easy to do. Right. Okay. Well, work free for one of the two of us. Yes. But... <laughs> for, for me it is. Yeah. So we're going to scrape it all out. See the gorgeous dark color of it? Mm. We pared the ingredients down to only the essential ones. So the chocolate, the almonds, obviously, and eggs. That's the... This would be the great recipe for the first baking recipe anybody makes. Just all goes in a food processor, four <laughs> or five ingredients, done. Yes, yeah. you're right. So we reserve that one third cup of uh, toasted almonds and we're just going to sprinkle those over the top. It's, it makes for a beautiful look and it gives a little crunchy texture after it bakes. The torte bakes at 300 for 30 to 35 minutes, and that's what gives it that little fudgy texture. So Chris, our torte has been sitting and is completely cool. It baked in a 300 degree oven for 30 to 35 minutes, and we used a toothpick to test readiness, and the toothpick, rather than coming out clean, should have a little bit of fudginess still clinging to it. No, that's what I think. Well, okay. You no, know, any kind of chocolate cake, if it comes out clean, it's overbaked because it continues cooking yes. when it comes out of the oven. Yep. Yeah. We're going to first loosen the sides with a knife. Which is hardly necessary because the cake hardly. is properly baked. Right. And the pan was properly prepared. Then we're going to use the rack as one of our... Uh, Inversion surfaces, okay, tap lightly, there we go. Peel off the parchment, beautiful fudginess. And then the serving platter gets put on the proper bottom and re-inverted. Hmm. Voila. Nicely done. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, it is beautiful is though, plan? isn't it? Now this is a rich cake, it's moist and fudgy. You know, you don't need a big slice of it. But Life is not about what you need, <laughs> right, is it? It's about what you want. There we go. Thank you. And we have some unsweetened whipped cream, if you'd like to add. You know, when you're using bittersweet chocolate, unsweetened whipped cream is fantastic because then that doesn't sweeten the chocolate flavor of the cake. I just love to smell it. Mmm. That, you know, for four or five ingredients, it's amazing. Yep. But it's not heavy. It's rich, but it's not heavy, heavy, you know? Such an elegant thing for so little effort. This is why you go into the culinary arts for a moment like this, right? Yep. So somebody else can make your dessert. <laughs> <laughs> and you can have a great <laughs> slice of chocolate almond flourless cake. Mm. Mm. So Torta Caprese is a marriage of chocolate and almonds. Uh, chocolate started around the 17th century, but later on, they got together with the almonds and made a flourless chocolate cake. Our version is half a dozen ingredients, all in the food processor, very simple to do, in a 300 degree oven for half an hour. And that's it, simple, delicious. Thank you. I'm here with Brianna Holt from the Tandem Bakery in Portland, Maine. Mm -hmm. Now, how do I describe you? A new age, a new wave <laughs> baker. So today we're going to do a coconut spelt cake, right? Yep. 
Yeah, it's kind of like a pound cake or a tea cake, some might call it. And it's made with a really tasty spelt flour that's grown in Maine. So first we're gonna brown the butter and we wanna get it really brown, really toasty, almost, dare I say it, burned. All the milk solids in there are gonna cook and get really, really dark. And then when it cools, it's this creamy, brown, nutty butter. But I do wanna give it a stir and a swirl every once in a while. Did you hear that? It starts to get a little quieter. So it's, I would say it's about halfway there. So you want it to be dark brown, darker than amber, and you wanna smell it. So you want it to have a really nutty smell, a toasty, nutty smell. And I'm just gonna pour it in here and let it cool. You certainly don't wanna use it right now while it's hot and melted. So we have this really tasty brown butter. What we're gonna do first actually is whisk together the dry ingredients here mm -hmm. for the cakes. We got our all-purpose flour um, and our spelt flour, some toasted coconut. That's unsweetened. Toasted. Unsweetened, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And some salt and some baking powder. And then we'll whisk all this together. You wanna have this ready to go because we're gonna add it to our bowl after the butter and the sugar are creamed. So since you're a professional baker, is it weird for you to make one recipe instead of 20 at a time? It is sometimes weird, but I go home from work and I bake for myself relatively often. Although I still always make much too much at home for myself. And then take this tasty brown butter and we're just gonna get it right in the bowl here. And it's pretty soft. Uh, it's always gonna be a little softer than regular butter, but you do want to make sure that you're using it at room temperature rather than hot. And then the sugar. So we're gonna cream these things, and we're gonna cream this. You don't wanna take it too far. You don't want it to be really light, fluffy. You don't wanna aerate it too much, but you do want it to Because then it'll get... collapse when it bakes? Yep, then it'll collapse when it bakes. But you do want it to come together, and you do want it to get a little bit lighter. And while it's running, we're gonna pour our eggs in. So guys, ask a question. Yeah. So you're creaming it on fairly low speed. Yep. And yeah. a lot of creaming takes three or four minutes. So this is gonna be a little quicker in a lower speed creaming? Yep. Yeah, okay. we don't wanna incorporate too much air because this is kind of a dense pound cake. And we'll get our eggs in. And you kinda of wanna let one get in there a little bit before you join the party with the next one, or two, as the case may be. So now that our mixture is kind of shiny, smooth, almost ribbony looking a little bit, we're gonna stop it here. And we're gonna put in some of the dry stuff. So we've got our dry mixture here. We're just gonna dump in a little bit here like this. Alternating helps to keep it from getting overmixed or undermixed. And for our wet, we have buttermilk, some vanilla. And the buttermilk is really tangy and acidic. That's gonna help tenderize the cake. It's gonna flavor it. So we've got our dry stuff in there. Turn it back on. It doesn't need to all get mixed in. And then we're just gonna pour a little bit of that in. Not all of it, maybe about half to a third. And then we're gonna stop it. And it's pretty lumpy, but that's okay. We don't mind that. So this is addition two of three. I like to do three. Three turn. dry, two wet. Or three and three. three. Yep, so we'll put a little more in there like that, and then stop it. Super so you're, you're not beating it more than like five or 10 seconds after each addition. Mm -hmm. It's basically a really light hand. Yeah, you don't wanna overmix it. What this does is make a really tender cake with a nice crumb. Pour this right in, that's the last of our buttermilk. So here's one of my great baking questions, which yeah. is what happens to those lumps in the batter, you put it in the pan, you bake it, and you take it out, there are no lumps. If there's butter in there, it's evaporating. If there's sugar in there, it's kind of melting into the crumb of the cake. What we're gonna do is finish this by hand. So we take our spatula, basically just fold it over itself a few times. All right, and then we're gonna put it in our pan. So just get all that in there, like that. So it is lumpy. Yep. I mean, it really is lumpy. Yeah, well, there's also toasted coconut in here. Oh, so that's true. Yep, so you're seeing that in there too. It's not just the little dough lumps. And that's it, and now we're gonna put it in the oven. 350 for about 80 minutes. And you know it's done, you wanna poke it, and it should come out with a, a few wet crumbs still attached, not totally clean. And you can kind of give it a little poke with your fingers. It should have a little bit of give, but a little bit of spring. This, this is a professional baker who's, so you're just going like this? This mm -hmm. is touchy-feely? Yeah, yep. you, know? you wanna know what it's feeling, uh -huh. what it's thinking? 
So here's our finished cake, and now we're gonna soak it. You wanna let it cool just a little bit. If it's really hot and you soak it with this soak, it's all just gonna go right through. Yep. Okay. So this is our soak. It's coconut milk and water and sugar, and you just wanna microwave it for a minute or so until the sugar is dissolved. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna keep the cake moist. So we're just gonna poke it all over. Just kind of get all these little holes in here, which is kind of fun. Poke and soak. Poke and soak is literally what we say at the bakery. All right, so we poked it all over, and now we're just gonna brush it all over with this soak. It's gonna get a little sweeter, a little wetter, a little more coconutty. And then we'll let it cool completely before we pop it out of the pan and glaze it. So we're gonna start with confectioner's sugar and some coconut milk. A lot of coconut milk everywhere, all over the place with this cake. A little bit of salt. We're gonna whisk this together. So this is a standard confectioner's sugar glaze, yeah, which is, this is a lot of sugar and a little liquid, yep. orange juice, milk, coconut yeah, milk, whatever. Yeah, yep, lemon juice. A lot of times, just like a classic lemon pound cake will have that nice, like in a New York City deli and it's wrapped in plastic, it's got that nice thick kind of cracky glaze on it. I love that. It's a little thick, but it's still gonna drip down the sides of the cake a little bit. So we'll take it, get it on there. I love a glazed pound cake. I find it to be classy, kind of like a 1950s vibe. I love how it looks. And you can just let it drip all over the top, down the sides. All right, so now we have, just to gild the lily a little more, some toasted coconut. So we're just gonna sprinkle this all over the top of the cake here. And you can go crazy or you can hold back, whatever your heart tells you. But I like to have a little crunch and a little extra coconut. It looks great. You want to let it set, I don't know, maybe like 10 minutes? 10 I, can, I, can, minutes? I can handle 10 minutes. You can handle 10 yeah. minutes? Okay, good. It's got some dramatic, sassy drips. I'm gonna cut you a big slice. Good. The center cut. Yeah, center cut. Well, it's like, yeah, it's like salmon. That's exactly center right, cut. the fattiest part. I have a plate and a fork here, unless you're the kind of cake person that wants to eat with your hands. I would probably do it with my hands, but I'll use it. <laughs> Yeah, generous, generous slices, that's the goal. Okay, well. Mmm. Yeah. Mmm. You like your good. own baking? I love that's it. Good. <laughs> I've noticed that you know, Claire Patak in London, she did the Royal Wedding yeah. Cake. Uh, you, a lot of other people, are mixing savory and sweet a lot. Mm -hmm. And so you get a lot more flavor. And it's much more interesting than everything just all sweet. Yeah. I think it really makes it much better. And I think the spell does that. You know? Yeah, I like a good balance. So uh, coconut spelt cake, it has really darkly brown butter, which mm -hmm. added a lot of flavor to it. It has a soak on top and then a glaze. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a twofer. Yep, yep. Uh, but it's basically a pound cake, so it's really not that hard to make. No. But no. it's the best pound cake you'll ever eat. I like to think so. Uh, I'm, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Brianna, thank you. You're welcome, thank you. You know, I like to say this recipe is all about marketing. Mm -hmm. It started out as a Galician sort of almond cake from Spain, been around quite a long time. And then in 1924, a local bakery decided we'll put the shape of a cross using powdered sugar on the top. And so it became sort of a religious cake, mm -hmm. right? And so a little bit of marketing uh, turned it into a very popular almond cake. Now it should be popular because it tastes so good and it's actually a very simple cake to make. Yeah, that's really what we love the most about this cake. It's just got a wonderful texture and a wonderful flavor. And on top of that, you know, it ended up being a really, really simple cake to make. And it's, and it's really the chewy texture that's really key for this cake. Yeah, it reminds me of like a giant almond macaroon, Ooh, which I love. It's nothing delicious. wrong, nothing no, wrong with that. No, exactly. So we're going to start out by adding three whole eggs and then the extra three whites. I'm going to break these up a little bit. And then to this, we're going to add a cup plus two tablespoons of sugar. I noticed there's no electric mixer no, on the counter. No, got rid of all that. And then a half teaspoon kosher salt. This is a quarter teaspoon almond extract to heighten the almond flavor. And then also a quarter teaspoon of vanilla. And I know it doesn't seem like very much, but this you're, cake you're gonna, is so you're, you're simple. You're being a little cheap I, but, with <laughs> the extracts here. Don't you think <laughs> it we is, go up to half a teaspoon? But there's actually, you know, there's no flour in this cake and there's so few ingredients, no butter. So you only need a little bit of extract. It really does come through. You know, my rule is though for recipes with vanilla extract, double it. 
<laughs> I, I was just. It's doubling. expensive these days. Okay, well, I, I'm just. I'm going crazy. I'm just. I'm spending my last little there bit. There you go. It's worth it, right? On vanilla extract. Yeah. So now I'm just going to whisk this by hand, fairly vigorously, for about 30 to 45 seconds, and I just want to really break up those eggs so we don't have any egg pieces in the final batter. It's starting to get frothy, and the eggs are really well broken down. And now I'm going to add. This is two and a half cups of blanched almond flour. And I'm going to whisk this, getting any lumps that I see. Okay. This is ridiculous. It's re it is ridiculous. I mean, it's so easy. It is so, yeah. It's easier than pancakes. And now I'm going to transfer this to our pan that we have prepared. This is a nine inch cake pan, and we've greased it, and we've lined it with parchment paper, and then greased it again. This is really important because this cake, because it has so much sugar in it, will stick. Also, because as you can see, this is a fairly loose batter. You don't want to substitute a springform pan because It'll leak. yeah, it might leak. So we're just going to sprinkle the top. This is three tablespoons of turbinado sugar, which adds a nice crunch. And then we're going to add one third cup chopped sliced almonds. And together, these are going to bake up in the oven. It's going to develop this really wonderful, like you know, dark brown, chewy crust. And that's it. It's going to I go. Feel I feel somehow, you feel cheated? Yeah, I feel cheated. I, I feel like unsatisfied. <laughs> Usually you spend time, you show me how to do this and that. Yeah. You just dumped, stirred. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So this is going to go bake in a 350 degree oven with a rack set in the middle position. It does take a while, between 45 and 55 minutes to bake all the way through. And then it's done. Well, it took us three minutes to get in the pan. We can wait for the you baking. Yeah. It's not so bad. <laughs> OK, so you're ready? I'm ready. This baked for the full 55 minutes. Then I let it cool for 10 minutes. I just ran a knife around the edges and I popped it out of the pan, peeled off that parchment, and I reinverted it. And then it's been cooling for about an hour and a half. So, ready to eat. I'll give you a nice big piece this time. You know, in life, I'm always suspicious when something looks too good to be true. Because <laughs> this was a three minute you know, yeah. process. So you're suspicious. I'm a little suspicious. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to put a little bit of creme fraiche on this because it is a sweet cake and this is a really nice compliment. I don't want to cover up those pretty almonds. I just want it. This is what I get. The, oh, you want more? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> be generous of spirit. It's a rich cake. Do you want more? Sure. Sure you do. Oh, we're going to go sure for it. Sure you do. We're just going nuts. Well, okay. So you can I... look, but just like looking at the crumb of the cake, you can see how mm. moist it is. Mmm. Mm. You're right. It's a cookie in the form of a cake. Mm hmm And you know, you can really taste the almonds. You really mm. don't need much more than those little bit of extract to flavor this cake. What you really like about this, besides the fact it's moist, is that the top is crunchy. It is, yeah. So you have this crunchy top uh, on top of the nice moist cake. Mm. Yeah, the sugar and the nuts, and they sort of combine the heat of the oven and it just really forms that beautiful crust. It adds a nice crunch. This is a rare case in baking where you get out a lot more than you put in. I mean, sometimes you put in a lot of work and you don't get much out. I've done that. This is zero work in and an A product out. I mean, this has to go into the Hall of Fame. I agree. For, you know, return on investment desserts mm -hmm. in financial terms. So Tarta de Santiago, or Spanish almond cake, is ridiculously easy to make and ridiculously delicious. You can get this recipe and all the recipes from this season of Milk Street at MilkStreetTV.com. Funding for this series was provided by the following. Ferguson's proud to support Milk Street and culinary crusaders everywhere. For more information on our extensive collection of kitchen products, we're on the web at fergusonshowrooms.com. For 25 years, Consumer Cellular has been offering no-contract wireless plans designed to help people do more of what they like. Our U.S.-based customer service team can help find a plan that fits you. To learn more, visit consumercellular.tv. Since 1899, my family has shared our passion for everything that goes into our Mutti 100% Italian tomatoes. Only tomatoes. Only Mutti. 
Designed by cooks for cooks for over 100 years. Cookware collection by Regalware. Handcrafted in Wisconsin. The AccuSharp Knife and Tool Sharpener. Designed to safely sharpen knives in seconds. AccuSharp. Keep your edge.